My father built a basement bedroom for the two oldest boys. Brown linoleum, two by fours, paneling, ceiling tiles, hours scraped from rock between work and work. Christmas, a week each summer, one week in the month. For seven years, one hammer rising and falling, one room. This summer, I painted my porch roof, splattering white onto the tree below till it resembled work by an obscure modern artist. My children danced beneath me. Back off, I shouted from the shaky ladder. My father had two cancerous moles removed. To my disbelief, he never saw the sun. Five children against the wall, squirming for the camera for the missing father. The paneling hides the strike zone I drew on cement and crayon. Will anyone ever uncover it and fire another fastball? Ceiling and walls remain half finished, a patchwork of rec room and cellar. I run my hands over the edges where he stopped. My mother can no longer descend the steps, despite the double railing installed 30 years ago for her own mother. He does the laundry now. Light sifts down through glass block windows. He worked for Fords for 33 years. He sometimes laughs now. I do not want to stray far from my mother's voice, asking me to bring something up for her. She steadies herself on the landing. Upstairs, she kept the order. Downstairs, he drove another nail in. Three sonnets, cutting my grandfather's grass. Cutting my grandfather's grass when he could no longer Rusty gas can spilled into dust, yank, 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 till the engine caught. He squirmed in a rusty porch chair in a straw fedora, as if he had to go, as if he had something to say, but, 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 in the dank basement all the world's tools sat clean and oiled and ready to march while their leader sat idle outside, sweating into his yellow handkerchief. He kept a skunky beer in the fridge for such occasions. Back and forth, the moor shot up the occasional rocket which he'd nod, perhaps acknowledging life's unexpected projectiles. He pinned a 20 to the inside of his shirt to elude muggers. The blade plastered grass against the underside of the moor. The sweet poison of gas and cut grass created waves of hallucinatory possibilities there in the middle of Detroit flanked by two vacant lots of rubble. Just one beer always, with your name on it. Dandelions and dust, but he wanted it out. He wanted it cut. Perhaps he was sending a message to an obscure holy man, St. Turfenfinger, patron saint of broken harps. He had one in his hallway, donated by the abandoned church across the street. I choked down the beer. We talked about a trapeze artist he once knew or the proving grounds at Packard where he tested a 10,000 cylinder engine and ended up on an abandoned planet very similar to the very spot on which he sat. He called me Jimmy and no one else did. So the day he called me boy, I knew what patch of grass he was headed for. Damn it, boy, he called me. I wanted the street to know he had a strong young man looking out for him more real than the fake dog he conjured with appropriate signage, doghouse, bones, and bulls. When I drove away, he waved till I was out of sight, and I did the same for him. Ah, gasoline. Ah, cut grass. A small patch. Sneeze of green on a dusty gray street. Two of his own children had died in that house. I always missed a spot, so it looked more like somebody lived there.